Um, hello. Well, welcome back. <laughs> We've asked some difficult questions here on the channel before, such as what is an explosive? How is an explosive? And even I think at points we've asked why is an explosive? But I don't think we've ever asked when is an explosive? Because think about it, right? Explosives are entirely a human invention. You don't have some pure chemical with a tendency to actually detonate occurring in nature. So that means that somewhere between, I don't know, like the Big Bang and yesterday, there was a universe completely devoid of explosives and then someone invented the primary explosive and that would have been the first primary explosive in the universe to ever exist. We're talking high explosives here, so don't get all like technical at me and say, oh, well, there was supernova, supernova neutron star is a fucking form of explosive. No, don't, no, I'm talking about like a chemical high explosive here. The most obvious answer is you say, oh, well, black powder or gunpowder, but black powder is technically a low explosive. It doesn't detonate. So even though the Chinese invented it in, say, the ninth century and were already developing firearms and fireworks, that's not a high explosive. The ability to detonate at thousands of meters per second is a property that only explosives have. So having a small amount that can do this, is something that wasn't invented in China in the 9th century. So when was it? When was the first primary explosive? The answer, somewhat surprisingly, is approximately 1590 AD. I mean, the 1500 sounds like a long time ago, but then you think about everything that happened before we invented explosives. King Henry VIII could not have perceived of an explosive. He simply didn't know they could exist because they didn't exist when he was around. We're really quite at the peak of alchemy. Most of alchemy was just obsessed with turning things into gold because gold was seen as very unreactive, therefore kind of unaging. So they thought gold was the elixir to immortal life or something like that. So, so a lot of the time they're just fucking around trying to turn different elements into gold. You could turn it into gold, you're technically making it immortal. Then maybe you could turn people immortal. So you just kind of turn everything into that yellow element. And Wait, there's something here. Wait, they're fucking around. The synthesis at any point goes yellow, gold it just stops working. All yellow chemistry is things were going yellow. Just fucking around. Things were going yellow, and then they were just like, oh, there's just fucking gold in my reaction. No, that makes fucking sense. Alchemy is trying to turn things yellow, and chemistry is trying to avoid things turning yellow. Also, gold was expensive then. I mean, it's still expensive now. And if you're gonna fuck around with science, you might as well try and work out a way to get yourself rich. They'd win so many grant funding rounds. Oh, I just want to do some experiments and it's gonna make us all rich and fucking immortal. Like, how would you even compete? It's like, well, this application's good, but, you know, it's not really gonna make me immortal, is it? So it was during one of these elaborate alchemy, sort of fucking around with gold with the boys kind of session that the first primary explosive was made, and it was called fulminating gold. Fulminating in Latin means explosive, so they just called it explosive gold. I mean, what do you expect? Creativity? No. It was written about by a guy called Basil Valentine, and no one's quite sure if he's an actual person or just more of an idea of a couple of people. But one thing is no one for sure, his method of making it is that is absolute shit. I'm sorry if he's your great, 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 great grandfather, but we're not going to follow his method because it involves too much human urine for my own liking. So we're going to do my own method. We're going to make fulminating gold, the very first primary explosive. To dissolve gold, we use aqua regia, which is a mixture of hydrochloric and nitric acid, which uh, quite slowly dissolves gold, but um, compared to anything else that can dissolve gold, it's actually quite rapid. I actually did this reaction ages and ages ago, but I uh, took the reaction mix, I dried it out in a desiccator over a couple of months. And we get dried chloroauric acid, which I, I've kept in a desiccator for years, so we can bring it out in the uh, current year and start reacting with it. So we want to just get a small amount and dilute it in some distilled water. And we're going to be adding in some ammonia solution. And that's going to first precipitate out some gold hydroxide as the pH increases. But as we add more and more ammonia, that gold hydroxide sort of redissolves and forms a different precipitate, which is a slightly different brown color. And that is our fulminating gold. So already we've done it. We've, we've done fulminating gold. It's not an exact chemical with an exact formula. It's really just a mix of whatever's in solution at the time. Chloride, you know, there's water. But really it's the ammonia complex with the gold that has such a tenuous link. And because you pack so much ammonia and nitrogen, in there, you can actually form quite a powerful explosive because it generates all this gas when it explodes. Oh, that was incredible! As you'd expect, the explanation from the uh, early alchemy work is just absolute shit. You gotta respect that they, you know, had a go and they actually did the work and they wrote it down. That doesn't still make me an asshole for, for telling them that they're wrong, does it? Am I, uh, 
Is that is that a dick move? All they could do was really compare it to black powder, even though black powder is a low explosive, and they kind of knew that material that they made was completely different and much more powerful than black powder. So they thought, well, maybe it must be precipitating out some gold sulfur, which is much more finer than the sulfur used in black powder because the, they thought the sulfur in the black powder was the thing making it blow up. But they did know that there wasn't actually any proper sulfur in the fulminating gold. It was more sort of the idea of sulfur that was precipitating out. It's fucking alchemy. I mean, it is pretty damn powerful. When I first made it a couple years ago, I, I was kind of losing my mind Which, over it. Uh, that amazed me. I mean, that's 120 milligrams and it was so loud. But I mean, you can't blame me. I was young and I was getting excited. These days I'm fucking jaded and I can't get excited for an explosive unless it's fucked up and it's got depth velocity of over 8,000 meters per second or tentacles or some shit. One of the coolest things about this explosive is the smoke color. You can kind of see it's a reddish sort of purpley smoke. That's not coming from anything organic. That's actually coming from the gold particles itself. Because of the speed and the force of the explosions, the particles of gold that you form are about the same size as wavelength of light. So they're colored because of a property called surface plasmon resonance which is about the same level of voodoo horseshit as alchemy is really i mean is it purple because of ghosts or is it purple because of surface plasmon resonance it's 50 50 either way if i was trying to publish a paper here i'd call this something like a rapid solvent free green method of producing gold nanoparticles that are ligand and protecting group free yeah if you publish it just list me as a co-author or some shit i, I need the street cred <laughs> I need to publish more papers. <laughs> Fulminating gold was the only high explosive known for, for a long time, but in 1715 or so, the same approach was applied to silver metal to produce fulminating silver. Silver metal dissolves very easily in just nitric acid. There's no need for aqua regia with this. You can just dissolve it in plain dilute nitric acid to form silver nitrate. Next, we take a very small amount of our silver nitrate solution and dilute it up in some distilled water, which we're going to add ammonia to. Just like in the gold, we see the silver hydroxide precipitate out and then re-dissolve as more and more ammonia is added and re-complex the silver back into an amine silver complex. And the solution's fine at this point, but now we start adding very slowly, very small amounts of solid sodium hydroxide. This starts to precipitate out a black solid, which is our fulminating silver. The big difference between fulminating silver and fulminating gold is the sensitivity. Fulminating silver is one of the most sensitive compounds ever. Oh, fuck me. I worked on a very small scale and still it was impossible to work with. This stuff has the sensitivity of nitrogen triiodide, however it does not need to dry. It's not even dry. It still detonates even wet or even completely in suspension. If you add too much sodium hydroxide all at once, that heat from the sodium hydroxide dissolving into solution actually detonates the suspension of explosives. Hey. Just ludicrous. It's so sensitive. And I've had several accidents with it, one of which sprayed my ceiling with uh, silver solution and um, that stain is still there as a bit of a reminder that sometimes you can work with things um, that you shouldn't be. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. The keyword, of course, is the very small scale, so if your whole batch does explode, you're still not gonna get injured or, or hurt in any way. Small scale, small scale. That being said, I've never actually seen the fulminating silver dried out, and I wanted to see what its properties were. We can't dry it out in the sunlight because the UV quickly uh, decomposes any silver stuff in there, so, so we gotta avoid all sunlight as much as we can. So to dry it out, we take a small amount of this black suspension and suspend it in some new distilled water just to wash it all up, and then we take some of that suspension out and we put it into some acetone. And the acetone weirdly sort of makes it all clump together, so we can get a small amount of this and sort of push out a little turd of it on a plastic spoon. We can't use aluminium foil because the silver seems to react with the aluminium foil and, and it doesn't dry properly while in aluminium. We leave it somewhere dark and then come back very carefully, bring it back after all the acetone has evaporated to leave us with dry fulminating silver. Jesus. This is the most unhandleable explosive I've I've come across. You cannot do anything with this. Anyway, so we've reached the 1800s and now attention in the science world has turned to a new hot metal of the time, mercury. 
make fulminating mercury, we first need to dissolve up some mercury, so we add some very dilute nitric acid to the liquid metal, which should dissolve the mercury and form mercury 2 nitrate. And this looks really cool because uh, it's the liquid metal and you know it's dissolving and forming gases and, and being a liquid metal and man I just wish mercury wasn't so toxic because it's, it's so cool to look at. Next we take some of that mercury nitrate, dilute it down into distilled water and we're adding in sodium hydroxide solution. This precipitates out some disgustingly yellow mercury oxide. This mercury oxide is very yellow because it's been precipitated out very fast, so we see it as a, as a bright yellow solid even though uh, most mercury oxide isn't really this intensely yellow. We let our mercury oxide settle to the bottom, we take off uh, the leftover solution and we add in some ammonia solution. There's no immediate change, but the reference we're following says we need to wait uh, about 8 to 10 days. Even after 4 days, it looks like it's uh, changed colour, but really it's only the outside and there's a lot of disgusting yellow hiding in the middle. But after 8 to 10 days, we see our solid has completely converted into a white solid rather than the yellow. It's fucking, it's not explosive at all though. I, I don't know what I fucked up with this procedure. There's like three steps and I, I followed them and it changed color. It's just not explosive. It's very hard to find any information out on uh, fulminating mercury because a few years after fulminating mercury was first written about, a British chemist called Edward Howard discovered a new compound which he called a new fulminating mercury. It was discovered that this fulminating mercury, unlike every other explosive beforehand, was a distinct chemical with a distinct formula. The mercury 2 iron bond to a new organic group which they called the fulminate iron because what do you expect from them creativity so instead of fulminating mercury this solid became mercury fulminate mercury fulminate was the first primary explosive to have favorable enough properties that you could do large-scale manufacturing with only the loss of some life so mercury fulminate was the first commercial explosive and within just a few decades of it being invented Britain was using it to bomb people in Afghanistan for the very first time that's really the history of explosives we're not going to talk about fucking fulminate Platinum. As always, thanks to my Patreons for supporting this video. You can go over to Patreon if you want to support me there. I spend the money on, on new equipment. I'll be contributing to my next goal, which is a, a very good slow-mo camera, one of the Kronos cameras, so we, we can get some slow-mo footage of explosions. Also, the explosions by Discord, subreddit, Twitter account, and I don't know, subscribe and stuff. And...